So at the time, like 2012-ish, collectible card games primarily existed in paper format. There weren't that many digital card games. Hearthstone hadn't even been released yet. There were some digital card games, but those were very literal translation of the physical experience as much as possible. And so we thought, okay, this is a really good opportunity to make a League of Legends card game that had mechanics that wouldn't show up in a paper card game because they were too challenging to pull off. Imagine if you had a Warwick card and you'd see Warwick climbing up the top of the deck towards the top as he caused damage. And it should be something you couldn't pull off in physical. You know, you couldn't like know where Warwick is in the deck and then move him up. But in digital, all those rules could be done by the computer in the background. So we're really trying to play off the transition from paper to digital and to make a really good strategy game. At the time when we were working on what we fondly refer to as bacon, because we perceived there to be this great opportunity, our assumption was that other people saw that same opportunity. And maybe six months towards shipping the game, Hearthstone was announced. We were at PAX East the day that they announced Hearthstone. You know, in my head, honestly, I was hoping it wasn't good, which is a terrible thing to say, but I was really nervous. Like, I was like, hey, we've worked on this for a couple of years. I think we've got something, it's not quite there yet. I was hoping that it didn't blow us out of the water. And we sat down, and as I played the game, the thing that stood out to me was just, wow, this game looks and feels amazing. It was just a level of polish and care there that made it feel like a physical board game. And more importantly, like even those unfamiliar with the card game genre could get into really quickly and understand and have fun with right out the bat. Our game, quite frankly, was complicated to learn because it was actually made to be a similar complexity card game to the paper ones. We all realized, man, it's going to be a huge jump to go from a game like that to ours. We felt over time that that just wouldn't be acceptable in this kind of new age of digital card games that we're going for. So that was a pretty big self-identity crisis for the old Bacon team, where the thing that we were going after, we realized, might not be the right thing for players at that time anymore. And so basically we decided to icebox the existing version of the game and just started from scratch. After that, we bought every conceivable board game and card game that we could get our hands on. And what we did is we just dissected what made a great turn-based game. And then we started to make prototypes. What we would do is for every prototype we made, we would put a little blurb underneath it about what we learned. And we called that the Great Wall of Bacon. One of my favorite ones included a prototype called Fighter, where one player was a champion and his cards represented abilities just of that champion. But it's much more a splashy summer game that would have been pretty hype. Not so much a game that you're gonna invest your life into. And I think that was the sort of the sense-made approach that just if we're interested in making a game that players really think of as a lifestyle, like what are the characteristics of that game that really help make that possible? Not just with card games, a lot of that appeal is actually a deck building experience. When we look back on our childhoods playing these card games, you don't have a lot of spending power and you don't really know what's good or what's bad. You're mostly playing with what you've opened in whatever the one pack you got. We call that kind of like kitchen table magic. If you've played card games, everyone has a story where they made some super janky deck and pulled off a win or made something crazy happen. And that's the beauty of the deck building experience. I would say at a high level for Legends of Runeterra, we wanted all players to be able to experiment, allowing them to feel like these Heimerdinger mad scientists where they had a well-funded lab full of cards and they can make crazy creations to their heart's desire. And so we brought that thesis with us for future prototypes. And one of those actually was the earliest version of Legends of Runeterra. This prototype had what we call interactive strategy, where it's almost like you're having a conversation. Where like, I say something, take my turn, you say something, you take your turn. We found that we were missing that back and forth when we played digital versions of these strategy turn-based games. I think the moment we realized that the prototype was the one we were going to move forward with was when people on the team wanted to build decks and try to win a monthly bacon tournament, seriously, people were brewing decks, but not trying to show their deck to other people. And when we watched and saw how much strategy and back and forth play, that was when we started to realize that we had something really cool. Because at that point, the game's not even pretty, but if you see people playing games for fun, you know you've got something special. So if we can unlock that gameplay experience, that's one way we can have really high confidence that the game has an infinite level of skill and depth. 
when I look back on our decision to make a reset, it's not something that I regret at all. We could have shipped that other game and it probably would have done okay and it probably would have faded away and it probably would never have had the chance to go the distance like Legends of Runeterra does. While those moments were painful and we had to learn a lot from them, I think they obviously led us to where we are today. As somebody who knows a lot more about the future of the game, I'm also still very much excited to show players the game that it's going to become because that's our goal is to bring players a better and better experience that they could not have imagined from this genre.